Next up, we have Zach Pickens, the defensive tackle out of South Carolina, who uh, is an interesting prospect. You know, he's someone that uh, I had graded earlier in the year, and if you have seen my big board video, I, I wasn't, you know, particularly high on overall compared to maybe uh, where the national media has had him going. Uh, but he was someone that one of my subscribers wanted to hear more about. So in that regard, uh, here we go. And one of the reasons I say he's an interesting guy uh, just off the bat here is that as you're going to see, uh, one of the things that I thought re really jumped out to me this offseason was Pickens' weight fluctuation. I don't quite know uh, what's going on there. You know, if if he was in fact playing last season at 305, that's a pretty massive jump to drop down to 291. Because uh, he's someone that in my initial notes I said, you know, maybe could play some one tech, maybe could play some three tech. Uh, has some interesting versatility potentially in that regard based on the guys you have around him. But at 291, uh, you are almost exclusively a three technique, right? So part of me wonders if that's what he plans on being or if he was just dropping weight to run really fast at the combine. Because frankly, I, I didn't see that athleticism on film. You know, the 489, the, uh, you know, solid three cone and things of that nature. That didn't really pop on film for me. That said, uh, you know, 15 pounds makes a big difference, <laughs> you know. So if he does plan to, you know, maybe trim some of the fat and, and rebuild even potentially and, uh, you know, alter the composition of his body, um, you know, I'm going to give a grade. We're going to talk about some film, but hey, maybe that's irrelevant, right? Because maybe he is already, um, you know, not the player, not the same player that we saw this past fall for South Carolina already let alone who he's going to become for the bears so an interesting guy um tall you know taller player six four he's got long arms which i think you can see uh quite a bit on film not a ton of bench press reps i'm not too worried about that um you know with the taller frame the longer arms so you know that's something that you'll see every now and then as far as the stats are concerned didn't really pop i would say i mean um I don't want to say he he hit his you know his peak and had his had his best year as a sophomore, but it seemed like you know outside of those couple sacks there, the numbers were kind of the same throughout, right? So maybe not the progression you'd quite like to see, um, but I don't think these are necessarily bad numbers, right? Uh, we have other you know three techniques and whatnot with you know three, four, five sacks. So uh, just the fact that he's had them, that's good. Um, but I think maybe you see some of this in the film, right? You see sometimes a little bit of, uh, you know, frustration, right? Because, hey, you look like a guy and at times you play like a guy who could have seven or eight sacks. And then you look at the stat sheet and it's like, oh, well, I guess you only finish with two and a half, right? I think there was a little bit of that with Pickens. And uh, in that regard, I, I guess we'll get right into the film. Um, as far as some of what I did like, some of what I didn't, some of what I thought he did well, some of what... I thought he didn't. As far as the explosiveness and quickness, you know, you're going to see some reps here, in particular, in particular in this Kentucky game. And you know, he's number six, and he's just beating guys off the ball. First step, um, really impressive. Um, and then you're going to see some clips from some other games where doesn't, you know, doesn't look necessarily the quickest, doesn't look the fastest. So I don't know what I don't know what that's all about. You know, there are some players who have inconsistent get-offs from snap to snap, but it feels like Pickens is almost more of a more of a game-to-game -game thing. Um, that said, he does have enough explosiveness to work from edge to edge when, you know, it comes to counters and whatnot and, and trying to work the, the pocket. Um, but I wasn't wowed by his speed necessarily. I thought that Kentucky game was the best game of his six that I evaluated. Um, but... Yeah, I think the explosiveness, explosiveness is interesting, you know, because then you have a rep like that last one where, or this one, say here, where, you know, that guard has a one second lapse and is going to, you know, cling on to the blitzing linebacker and works away from Pickens, but he's barely even out of his stance and, and is not really working up field to capitalize, right? So you're going to get some hit or miss in that fashion where sometimes he's going to pop and, and make these really nice splash plays and other times you're just going to be looking like what, what are we doing here but as a pass rusher um 
you know, he was solid. I thought his uh, his his best, you know, probably his best element to his game uh, is and are, I should say, the powerful hands and the ability to beat you as a power rusher, right? Showed off some impressive uh, bull rush reps and uh, wasn't, you know, wasn't nearly as unrefined as some of the other DTs in this draft, right? So in that regard, I, you know, I like it, but at the same time, I maybe wish he was pulling out those moves a little bit more often. You see there, another great play from that Kentucky game. We just got to see some from the other two games here. Uh, that I have clips from. As far as his ability to anchor and play against the run, I think he's all right against single teams, although there is a little bit too much, I would say, horizontal movement in his game. Right, A lot of people, when they think of your ability to anchor, it's just a, on a vertical plane. Um, but, you know, a lot of offensive schemes and a lot of offenses are built around just horizontal displacement, you know, widening that gap. And I think in a lot of ways, uh, Pickens sometimes can struggle working that way and... Uh, you know, playing on in that type of, uh, you know, I should say against that type of scheme more than anything else, right? Because, you know, he's not going to be necessarily someone that you can just totally drive backwards seven yards off the snap, right? Um, you know, he has a pretty strong lower body and, and whatnot um, and does a good job, you know, continuing to fight on some of those reps. But when it comes to displacing him laterally, I, I think teams are able to do a pretty decent job. And there's a couple of reasons for that, which we'll touch on in a bit. But uh, yeah, I do think against double teams, there are some questions because as, as I kind of mentioned, the height, uh, Pickens is a really tall guy, and I think you see and have some natural leverage concerns with him. Um, again, you know, he can keep fighting on some of those reps. That's a positive, right? Um, but then others, the leverage is going to kind of take him out of poise completely where he gets matched up against these guards that are four inches shorter than him, playing lower than him, and then just motoring him, right? And even though it's maybe not a ton vertically, it can be uh, laterally and horizontally. As far as the block shedding is concerned, I think Pickens, um, he's not bad. I didn't give him a crazy, you know, positive grade here. But I didn't give him a crazy negative one necessarily either. Again, I think sometimes the hands are, are solid. You know, you can kind of see it there. It's not the most impactful play of the world, but you can kind of see that you know, he's not someone who's looking to stay blocked, right? He he knows he has to get off of them, and he has the hand usage and ability to do so. I just wished it flashed on a little bit more consistent of a basis. Now, you have plays like that where it's like, uh, you know, he's kind of close, but we maybe just got to speed the process up. And I do think there is, uh, again, a bit of a reason for that, which we'll touch on here in, in, a, in a category upcoming as to why I don't think he's maybe processing and getting off these blocks as quickly as he could but i thought you know on some of these more straightforward plays where they're running right at him right i thought he could do an all right job getting off a box um and, and ultimately making a play as far as the motor is concerned wasn't bad but at the same time didn't wow me either and that's what there's gonna be a lot of clips of here um where you know he's moving towards the ball but I'm kind of looking at it and I'm like, well, is that a, if that is a 489 athlete, like, is he really trying his hardest on some of these? You know, so it's like, okay, it's a good thing that he's running. But is he really running on some? Yeah, I don't know. Not that I expect a D tackle to go chase down these plays and, and, and bring guys down 20 yards downfield, but there are going to be a couple of clips here where you see, like, it gets close now. And if he would have been a little bit more involved and tr may, perhaps trying a little bit harder, uh, he could have been, he could have been right there. Um, I just think maybe at times he's, he's a little bit too quick to pull up on some of these and, um, you know, you have a play like this, right? Uh, he's never probably going to make that play, but he has a defender downfield that's going to try and slow, slow that rain back down. I just don't see a four, eight, nine guy running there, <laughs> you know? So I don't know if I should dock him as far as the explosiveness and the speed and whatnot are concerned, or if I should dock him as far as the motor are concerned. I kind of gave him a little bit of uh, equidistant dock in both. You know, you kind of see him here. Uh, that's a play where it was one more tackler away from being on pickings to stop it from breaking along, and uh, it just doesn't feel like he has that sense of urgency necessarily on all of these. Not saying he can't make them, right? You know, that's a, that's a decent little rep, obviously, you'd like for him to finish the play. Uh, which kind of gets into this next category, but, you know, he's there. 
<laughs> you know, at least, especially when it is in the backfield. I thought, you know, the poise were there towards him. The motor was good. The poise were there away. Sometimes could wane a little bit. Finishing and tackling, uh, again, I gave an okay grade to. I think, you know, part of it comes back to just where he is relative to these running backs, you know, kind of because of the block shedding and some of the processing issues that I have with his game. Um, but all in all, you know, generally I would say when he gets his hands on you, you're going to come down. I just think I wish there were more plays where he got hands on, right? You're going to see a couple instances here where it's almost like the QB or the running back are just running right by him. You know, a play like that where it's like, you know, I get that you might not be the most explosive player in, in the United States of America, but, you know, Zach, I need you to dive. <laughs> I'd like to see you try it and stop that touchdown. And then we kind of already touched on the leverage here. Um, you know, you have plays like that where, hey, he's in on it, but it didn't look pretty, you know, because a lot of these plays, you know, two steps in the play and he's standing six feet, four inches tall, straight up. And I think he can give up his chest sometimes as a pass rusher in that regard. And, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons that I think he is a little bit less strong at the point of attack than he probably should be, you know. Uh, I think it all kind of comes back to partially that leverage, but then partially the block wreck. Now, this is something I have a bit of a problem with with Pickens. It's his lowest grade, and it's just kind of how I think he approaches the game. Um, you know, you look at a lot of these plays, and I think you, you've you seen it through the video if you've been paying close enough attention, but um, Pickens is watching the backfield. He's not, it doesn't appear as though he's reading what's going on in, you know, directly in front of him. He's going to find out where a play is going by, you know, by the running back taking him there. When in reality, all that's leading to is him putting himself in a position that's going to be, you know, at times too hard for him to overcome. You know, I don't know how many people watching this video have had experience as a, as someone playing in the trenches before, but, you know, I'll, I'll just tell you from the offensive side of the ball, as someone who was no lineman for 17 years, by my second step, uh, you should know, one, what the play is, essentially, two, where it's going, and three, how you have to, how you have to react to my block to get there. Uh, what do I mean by that, right? Well, uh, you know, if I, if I take a, a hard step at you, you know, on a drive block, let's say, that means that the ball is going to be going inside of me. I'm trying to keep you away from the ball, right? So if I reach you and I'm trying to get to your outside shoulder and cut you off from going outside and flowing in that direction, what does it mean? It means it's likely a zone play working in that direction and I'm trying to cut you off. What does that mean now for you, the audience member? If I'm trying to cut you off from going to the right side, I'm trying to get to your outside shoulder, where does that mean the ball's going? I mean, it's going to the outside. So as soon as I take that, you know, that bucket scooch step and I'm reaching you right and I'm trying to gain ground. Oh, you know, I'm gaining a little bit of ground backwards and then laterally, I'm really trying to work you laterally. Uh, what does that mean? It means that you need to react as such. What does it mean if I'm taking a hard 45 degree step right at you? It means I'm down blocking you. Where am I down blocking you away from? Uh, the play. What does that mean right away? You should have the answers off the bat here. It means that you got to work over top and defeat me that way because that's where the ball is going. What about on a play where your guy's pulling? You know, you're lined up as a three technique, the guard in front of you is pulling. Do you think the guard's pulling away from the play or towards the play? What do you th what do you think now? You should know as soon as that guard takes that first step for his skip pull, that one, the guard's going left. That means one, the play's going left. I, sh I should have said two, I suppose. Now, what does that mean? They're not just going to leave you unblocked in the backside B gap. That means that if the if the ball is going left, the guard is pulling away, the center is going to be down blocking you. That should all be off the top of your head within seconds of, of the snap. Milliseconds of the snap. Now, what does that mean? That center's down blocking you. How are you going to get to the play? Are you either going to have the explosiveness, like say a guy like Aaron Donald, to just get in the hip pocket of that pulling guard and run the play down from the backside? Or if you don't have that explosiveness, like Pickens, you're going to have to defeat that down block over the top and hope to make an impact on the play that way. Instead, you have a guy like Zach who, he's not reading that visual key, it seems. He's not, he's not feeling the pressure key of that down block hitting him. He's not, you know, he's not interpreting the game that way. He's waiting to see... Oh, running back going left. 
I need to go left. Well, hey, guess what? The center's already blocked you. Running back, going right. I need to go right. Well, guess what? You're already reached. So now here's the impressive part about Pickens game. Sometimes it doesn't matter. Sometimes he still has the physical ability to defeat the box. Even though he's he puts himself in a bit of a bad position, he's over to overcome it and make a play regardless. And that's why you draft a guy like Zach Pickens. It's for the upside. To me, you know, I, I mentioned it in my big board video. I'll say it now. To me, he's someone who is a bit more of a developmental prospect, but he's someone that, if you can develop, could be a very impactful player. You can see it on the screen. You know, where would I have felt more comfortable taking him? It's in that fourth round, personally, but uh, the Bears took him right at the top of the third. Do I hate it? Not necessarily. Do I love it? You know, especially relative to some of the other guys on the board? No. But I think you're betting on being able to teach Pickens the game, right? And rewire those wires and, you know, untangle that knot of how he thinks the position needs to be played. Um, you know, and and you can retrain his eyes and things of that nature. Because he knows, he knows the fundamentals of the game, right? Everybody does. They know that the offensive line is blocking you away from the play. In some way, shape, or form, they're trying to get between you and the ball. He knows that. But I think he just hasn't showed for me that discipline to work that every single play. Now, what's interesting is that, you know, ironically enough, I think they got the next guy who was just as bad in that regard around before. I'm not trying to make Bears fans feel bad, but I talked about it in my big board video. I had Jervon Dexter graded in the fifth round. You know, as a guy with, with good upside, he's got this nice physical frame. He's clearly a strong player, but just leaves a lot to be desired. And it feels like that's what the Bears got two of in this draft. And, you know, it's interesting because you'd think, well, you get one guy like that and I'm going to be upset. And sure, I will. But, you know, you get two of them and I, I'm a little bit less upset, actually. And I'm not saying that just because I'm a Lions fan that, you know, oh, I think your defense is going to suck. I actually think there's a lot of interesting elements that go into doubling down on a position in the draft to the point that you get these two high upside guys with maybe low floors, but, you know, you're not just saying, oh, Jervon Dexter, you're the savior of our D-tackle room, right? You see this a lot in drafts. You know, guys come in and they think they're getting drafted for what they've done and all they've accomplished and they're the best ever. And then they, you know, they don't realize that there's a league of 1,600 just stone cold killers waiting to get that opportunity. They don't, don't give a crap about who you are, where you're from, and what you've done in the past, right? They're going to make you earn that spot day in and day out. And I don't think... I don't think a lot of players realize that until it's too late. Well, the interesting thing about doubling up on a position is that you, you know, you gave Jervon and Zach that reality check within about two hours of each other. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, at, at one point it's, you know, nine o'clock, you're calling Jervon and he's celebrating. It's a party draft day. Let's go. I'm the future D tackle of the Bears. I can't wait to see who they pick next. Oh, they picked the guy who is going to give me competition, right? So it's not just, hey, Jervon, we believe you're the, the, the future of our franchise. No, it's, hey, Jervon, we need a D-tackle and we don't quite believe in you enough, right? It kind of rewires the way the draft is perceived by these guys. And you have great examples of it in the past as far as, the as, as, far as teams doubling up, you know? You've had examples where the guy who goes earlier pops much more. Right, he takes that as a challenge. He takes that as disrespect. We'll get Jair Alexander and say Josh Jackson for the Packers a couple of years ago. Jair in the first, Josh Jackson in the second. One's an all-pro, one's gone. Right? And I think it's because that early reality check. On the flip side, you have a couple examples where the guy who goes second turns out to be the stud. Because to them, it's not as much, oh, we... You know, we drafted you here, but we don't quite believe in you based on what we did after. It's, uh, well, you believe in me, but you clearly believe in that other guy more, right? You took him a whole round ahead of me. What's the deal? Uh, you know, two rounds ahead. What's the deal? 
And sometimes that can light the fire. You know, you look at examples like Hayden Hurst and Mark Andrews. First rounder Hayden Hurst, let's go! 24 hours later, <laughs> you know, Mark Andrews, he's excited to go there, but I'm sure he's wondering what the heck his future's going to look like. And it's sink or swim in that regard. You know, you look at the Lions. Aleem McNeil, Levi Onuzurike. A couple years ago, who do they pick? Levi number 41. We need a deep tackle. We got him. <laughs> Three hours later, just like we saw with the Bears here. Maybe we didn't get him, Levi, because we're bringing in Aleem too. And I think that creates a really interesting dynamic. You know, in a lot of ways, iron sharpens iron. Well, um, you know, I think that competition is, is good for guys incoming. It kind of takes you out of that mindset that, you know, you're the answer to our prayers. And instead, it puts, you, it, it puts you in a situation and gives you that reality check right away where, where you know um, your snaps are not guaranteed. And in, that, and in that respect, Aline McNeil, who then gets drafted in the third round by the Lions, has showed Pro Bowl caliber flashes, and Levi hasn't even touched the field, really. Right? And then you have the ultimate example. Say the Jets, when they drafted Jamal Adams. They take him in the, you know, top 10. Big deal. Great player. One of the highest guys I've ever graded. Next day, 24 hours later, boom, first pick in the second round for the Jets. Who is it? Marcus May. <laughs> you know, two Pro Bowl guys. Worked out great. An example that didn't work out great for that team, but one of the more popular ones would be RG3 and Kirk Cousins. QB is a little bit interesting because obviously they're, you know, it's kind of implied that RG3 is going to start and this, that, and the other. You know, Kirk's more of a security blanket, but... You don't think drafting those guys together, one, pushed RG3 to be a rookie of the year, and two, on the backside, has helped Kirk Cousins become a 10-year-plus starter in this league going forward? Definitely has. Definitely has. So in that regard, even though I have questions about both these players, and in particular, both in the same area, I gave Jervon a 2 out of 5 on block rec, which is right there with Pickens. Um... I think it'll, it'll create a really interesting dynamic for Chicago that I'm excited to see how it plays out. I'm very excited to see. Um, and frankly, based on my grades, I think Pickens will be the better one. I do. I think with him, there is a higher motor, right? There is a better get-off. Even though Jervon might be the, the better athlete overall, Pickens is a little, you know, even though I questioned his consistency, it's more consistent than Jervon, right? That's why I had him graded in the fifth. And I'm not trying to rag on everybody the Bears picked, but it just so happens that they took two guys I was lower on than the consensus, you know? Not saying I hate the players, but people that I would have felt more comfortable getting in the fourth and fifth round, respectively. So it's interesting. You know, one of my subscribers asked, well, how do you think Pickens compares to other guys that were on the board at the time? And that's maybe where some of my questions come in. Uh, for example, I had Byron Young out of Alabama graded higher. Um, you know, I just thought he was a more explosive player. Certainly based on what you saw on tape. But again, maybe we have to throw the tape out with Zach. You know? If you're cutting 15 pounds right away, boom. He might be a new Zach Pickens. Is that going to be Zach Pickens for the better, or is that going to be Zach Pickens for the worst, right? Because we talked about some of the better traits. What's well, the fact that he's this naturally strong guy? He's this big physical guy. He's got these violent hands. Well, now that we cut 15 pounds, is that going to negatively impact the strengths, you know, in lieu of trying to improve the weaknesses, in, in lieu of trying to get faster, perhaps be more agile and flexible as far as finishing and tackling is concerned? Really interesting. Because if you tell me 291 Zach Pickens is going to have that leverage that he has, I wouldn't have given him a 15.5 out of 20 anchor and strength at the point of attack, which is a you know a pretty solid grade there. You know, because I don't think he would have held up quite as well as he would have if he had 15 pounds less under him. I thought the strength and the size helped quite a bit there. So, really interesting player, someone that I think will be someone we have to come back and watch for you know years to come and. You know, someone that I'll be keeping an extra eye on, both him and Jervon, 
just because I want to see how it plays out. I'm someone who's a big advocate of doubling up in the draft. So even though I'm not a huge advocate of either guy individually, I think getting them both together actually might be the best for him. You know, two guys who may be underwhelmed statistically in college, well, you know, you're not just going to skate by on that anymore in the NFL. Because your replacement, he's already on the roster. We draft him the same day as you, right? So now you're creating that interesting dynamic. I don't, you know, I, I don't know how it's going to turn out. I think that'll create some, uh, hopefully, I think some fiery competition. And hopefully, uh, you know, like you did in the Jets case, both will work out great. But worst case, so like you did in the Lions instance, you know, maybe only one does. But I, I do think that getting both of these guys will uh, will improve that Bears defense in some regard. That said, it's pretty much all I have for you guys in this one. You know, I think these are two. And I, I'm saying these, I'm kind of lumping Jervon in there as well. I could do an individual on him if you want. Um, we could watch his get off, man. Oh, brother. I gave him a, I gave him the most radical first step grade I've given anybody in the history of my grades, D end or D tackle, um, and that's really what plummeted him on my big board. But if you want me to do a deep dive into what I think Jervon needs to clean up, I'll do it. I don't suspect many of you will because, you know, I I am a little bit lower on the players, but I think the potential is there. I think the body is there. I think the athleticism is there, uh, to an extent, and I I think we just need to see more flashes of it on the field. So with that said, if you want to see more flashes in my video, you know, all you have to do is uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, you know, if you are a Bears fan seeing this, I have I have reviewed some other prospects that you guys drafted. Most notably, uh, the video for Roshan Johnson has been up for a couple days. Big fan of his, actually. Had him graded higher than, than both of the DTs. So if you want to look on the positive side, there you go. You know, you want to hear me with a little bit more energy in my voice, there you go. But, uh... No, I don't hate what the Bears did by any means. And in that regard, I'm excited to see how this turns out in Chicago. So with that said, I think that's how this video is going to turn out as well. As I'm mic'd up and I'm mic'ing out, guys. See you next time.